Okay, this is Anthony Priscilla doing some trigonometry with my trig class. Uh, I'm going to do this one here. It says, find the following. Find tangent theta over 2, given that sine theta is 3 fifths, and theta is between 90 degrees and 180. So that would be quadrant 2 that theta is located in. In quadrant 2, x's are negative, y's are positive. So in quadrant 2, cosine theta would be negative, sine theta would be positive. And how the heck are we going to... Oh, we're going to use one of these identities for tangent theta over 2. Either plus minus 1 minus cosine theta over 1 plus cosine theta, or sine theta over 1 plus cosine theta, or 1 minus cosine theta over sine theta. No matter what, we need to know cosine theta, however we go through it. So I'm going to think of sine theta as y over r. This is some of the x, y, r, the first way we defined trig functions. In quadrant 2, x is negative. Oops, x is negative. Y is positive, so Y over R, 3 over 5. Now, X squared plus Y squared is R squared. The Y squared would be 3 squared, so that's 9. The R squared, 5 squared, 25. So, X squared is 16. X is going to be, usually students say 4. Well, it's negative 4 because you're in quadrant 2. So negative 4. And now, which one of these do I want to use? I'm thinking I'm going to do use 1 minus cosine theta over sine theta. So it would be 1 minus Cosine theta is x over r, so a negative 4 over 5. All over sine theta, that's what we were given, 3 over 5. Oh, this is going to simplify nice, isn't it? The minus a negative would be plus, so 1 plus 4 fifths. 5 over 5 plus 4 over 5, that's a 9 over 5. All over... 3 over 5, multiply above and below by 5, we have 9 over 3, which is 3. Okay. So tangent theta over 2 would be 3 on this problem. Well, what about... Number 8. Let's do another one like this. I think number 8 is a little bit messier. It's a tangent beta. Let me go ahead and write up the half angle identities for tangent. It's plus or minus square root of 1 minus cosine beta over 1 plus cosine beta. Or you could replace, drop the plus minus and square root and replace either of these with sine beta. So sine beta over 1 plus cosine beta. Or if you want the sine beta on the top, you have 1 minus, excuse me, sine beta on the bottom, 1 minus cosine beta on top. Well, we're told that tangent beta is negative square root of 11 over 5. And then we're told which quadrant beta is in. Beta is between 360 and 270. So that would be quadrant 4 between 270 degrees and 360 degrees. In those quadrant, in that quadrant, quadrant four, x is positive, y is negative. 
So depend, it doesn't matter whichever identity you're going to use, you're going to need to know, at the very least, cosine beta. So to find cosine beta, I'm going to do x, y, and r. Let's go ahead and take care of the sine S I G N. For beta, x is positive, y is negative. So tangents y over x. Well, where the heck does the minus go? But does it go with the square root of 11 or the 5? It goes with the square root of 11 because y has to be negative, x is positive. X squared plus Y squared equals R squared. That's how I'll find R. So 5 squared would be 25 plus, when I square this negative square root of 11, I just get 11. So I have R squared is 36. So R would be 6. So if I'm going to use this identity, all I need to know is cosine beta. Cosine beta is x over r, so 5 over 6. Now, if I want to use one of these other two identities, I need to know sine beta. Sine beta is y over r, so negative square root of 11 over 6. Generally, I want to use one of these because we don't have that big square root. But, which one of these, if I'm going to use one of these, which one do I want to use? Well, normally I use this, but uh, I don't want to, if I can avoid getting a square root in the bottom of the fraction, I want to avoid that. So I'm thinking this is one where I'm going to use sine beta over 1 plus cosine beta. Sine beta is negative square root of 11 over 6 over 1 plus cosine beta is 5 over 6. See, that's why I'm using this one. I didn't want that negative square root of 11 down here in the denominator of the fraction. So let's see, how would this simplify? We have negative square root of 11 over 6. And on the bottom, 1 plus 5 over 6, that would be 6 over 6 plus 5 over 6, 11 over 6. Oh, this is going to simplify nice now. Multiply above and below by 6. And we're going to have a negative square root of 11 all over 11. Okay, let's do another little uh, work with the double angle identities. That was a fine tangent, beta over 2. Now, let's look at our last problem on this assignment. It says, which of the following is an identity for sine squared? squared x over 2. So which one of these? Well, let me think. Let's talk about sine x over 2. So let's go ahead and write the half angle identity for sine now. Sine x over 2. It's positive or negative. Square root of, it's either 1 minus cosine or 1 plus cosine. I think sinus minus, so 1 minus cosine x all over 2. Now we want an identity for sine squared. Oh, this is going to simplify pretty nice, I think. Let's just put a square there and come over here and square. And square in a positive or a negative number, you're going to get a positive number. Square in the square root. The square root of the square cancel. So we have 1 minus cosine x all over 2. Oh heck, why couldn't they all be that easy? 
And that does it for these problems here that I wanted to work out. So uh, these are the half angle identities for sine, cosine, and tangent. So uh, we already derived them and done some homework or worked some problems with them and stuff. It was the derivation. That's how we began it all by taking the double angle identities for cosine and isolating first sine theta, then replace theta with a over 2, and then do the same thing. Cosine 2 theta equals 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. Isolate cosine theta. Replace the theta with A over 2. And that's about it for today. So work on your half angle identities. And uh, remember with identities, practice, practice, practice. That's how you get really good at this stuff. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.